All right, we're back. We are in notes nine of Calc AB, and we're going to talk about derivatives of inverses, which is actually kind of like a weird idea. Um, and I don't know, like it, it takes a little while before you see the sense in it. Um, actually, maybe you never really see the sense in it. Uh, there are things, you know, there's sign, there's inverse sign, but uh, once we cover this idea, you end up kind of memorizing that. But the, in general, we can find the slope of an inverse, the derivative of an inverse, and so we're going to learn how to do it. First, we got to remember uh, some stuff about inverses, though. So we're talking ultimately about derivatives of inverses. But to begin with, uh, we need to know that the functions f and g. So I usually use f and g instead of f and f inverse because it's like really annoying to talk about f inverse and the notation is like not great. Um, but f and g are inverses if and only if. So both of these need to be true. Uh, f of g of x is equal to x, and g of f of x is equal to x. So this is like a really important definition. Um, because a lot of things that you think are inverses maybe aren't inverses for like weird little reasons. And one of the best examples of that, I think, is uh, f of x is x squared versus g of x is the square root of x. So if we were to look at that, we know that uh, if, if f of x is x squared, so then f of g of x is going to be uh, the square root of x, and then we're squaring it, uh, and then when you square that, you actually just get x. Um, but you only actually get x provided that x is greater than or equal to zero, right? Because the domain of the square root of x is uh, x is greater than or equal to zero. So like you can't uh, get a value that's not in the original domain. So that's what happens when you do f of g of x. When we do g of f of x, g of f of x, we're going to do the square root of x squared, that by definition is the absolute value of x. That's true for all x, so every value of x. So these are not equal to each other. So x squared and the square root of x are not actually inverses. If you limit x squared to zero to infinity instead of uh, negative infinity to infinity, then you're good, but we don't limit it. And so they're not truly inverses. And that's the kind of thing we gotta look out for. So let's see uh, if we can answer some of these questions. If a function has an inverse, then the function, all right, let's see. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to say is uh, is one to one. So uh, is one to one. Also, I'm going to amend this question. If a function has an inverse that is a function, which is kind of like its own, it fun, how do you abbreviate function? Um, that's not function. Okay. Um, I feel like it's kind of implied in the question, but you, you know. Um, so if a function has an inverse, then the function uh, is one to one. Uh, what else? So I think that usually, usually people, instead of saying one to one, they actually say like what one to one sort of implies. So one to one functions, I'm going to say pass. So passes the horizontal line test. So it already passes the vertical line test because it's a function, right? A function has an inverse that's a function. So a function, so it passes the vertical line test because it's a function. If it has an inverse that's a function, it also passes the horizontal line test. Um, and then I'm gonna write one more thing, which is really just both of these together. Uh, but then the function uh, has one y value for each, nope, has one, I, I flipped it. So it actually, uh, I'll write the whole thing again so it's clear, has one x value associated with each y value. So it's the reverse definition kind of, right? A function, uh, each x value has only one y value associated with it. A one to one function, each y value has only one x value associated with it, which is confusing to me because I wrote this in the, that's right, but I wrote the backwards version of what I just said. Anyway, uh, let's see if we can do the next thing. So we're going to talk about like, uh, this is, this example is too simple, but it conveys the idea. Um, so if, if f of x is uh, 3x plus 2, then g of x, we want to find g of x, right? So like the traditional thing to do is to, um, switch x and y and then solve for y, right? So x equals 3y plus 2. So then y is equal to 
uh, what do we got here? X minus two over three, therefore G of X, which is F inverse. It's just easier if I G of X. G of X is X minus two over three. Okay, so now here's kind of the big idea, right? We're gonna find F prime. So F prime, I mean, F is a line. So the slope is just the slope. And then G prime, G is also a line. So the slope is just the slope. Well, what relationship do these have? Uh, this is this is only really a conjecture because, uh, as I said, this is like too simple. But uh, g prime is the reciprocal of f prime. So now the issue is that f prime is very simple, right? So like, it, and, and g prime is correspondingly simple. Is it like a general pattern that this will be true? Like, will this be true for all x's? Uh, in this case, it will be because the slope of f is true, is the same at every x value. The slope of g is the same at every x value. So like, uh, it is the case that there are reciprocals here, but maybe this is too simple. So what we wanna do is we wanna do something uh, less simple. So I'm gonna come back in the next video and uh, do something less simple, but this is kind of the start. So. Uh, and I don't want to like lead you on like, yes, this, this is the relationship, but we have to be a little more careful about it. So I'll be back in the next one um, and I will see you there.